Okay, the final topic in unit one is business growth. And uh, starting from the bottom, you need to remember why do businesses want to grow? Generally speaking, it's a good thing. You're going to increase your profits, your market share is going to get bigger, you're going to be pushing the competitors out of the way. And ultimately, as you grow, you get more power in the market and you buy in bulk. And that's what we mean by economies of scale. When you buy in bulk, you get discounts and that allows you to make even more profit or drop your prices and sell even more. So generally speaking, growth is a really, really good thing. So if you want to grow, there are two ways you can do it. Internal growth, which is also known as organic growth. So remember those two terms, and external growth, okay? Now, internal growth is when you concentrate on trying to sell more products. You're expanding your activities by launching products, target new groups of customers, lots more advertising, investing in research and developing new products. Now, why do you want to launch and sell and make more products? Well, because it makes you more sales and profits. And this is the key bit. When you've achieved extra sales, you put the profit that you make back into the business. And slowly but surely, over time, you're going to grow. External growth is all about mergers, joining with other businesses, or taking over those other businesses, just buying them. Now, I'm not going to read all that out. That's only a revision guide. But take note of the reasons for and against, because that's usually where the exams are going to ask you. Internal growth, because you're reinvesting your profits over time, tends to be less risky. You're not getting yourself into debt because you're using the money that the business has already made through the sale of its products. Right? It's a sensible st um, speed of growth, um, but it does take a long time. And shareholders might become frustrated because they want to see growth. Right? When, um, when you're taking several years to achieve it. Now, external growth, if you're going to join with another company, if you're going to buy another company, that means you're going to grow really, really quickly. And that's fantastic. But it's also high risk. Um, and the reason for that is often you have to spend money you don't have. And that means you're going to have to borrow that money. Whenever you borrow that money, you're in debt to a bank. And the bank expects to be paid on time and they expect to be paid with interest. And that means the amount you borrow is a lot less than the amount you've got to pay back. So external growth comes at a cost. Okay, now, when we talk about external growth, let's make sure we understand the difference between a merger and a takeover. So the first graphic that you see is a merger. Two businesses decide that it's in their interest to join together and they form a bigger business. Okay, more profits, bigger market share, etc. A takeover is different though. In the takeover story, business A decides it makes sense to buy business B. And so it does. And therefore, business B ceases to exist and business A becomes the bigger business. Okay? Now, obviously, a takeover is a lot more expensive than a merger because in a merger, two businesses are choosing to come together. Whereas in a takeover, one business is buying another. Okay, last topic area here then is integration. And integration just means joining together, mergers and takeovers. Remember that we have horizontal, vertical, um, lateral, and conglomerate. It's a bit of a mouthful list, but if you persevere with it, you see it's not as complicated as it sounds in these, these, these terms. So horizontal integration is when two firms who are in the same sector, in the same um, stage of, in, of production, um, they merge in together. Simply put, you've got two farmers, they merge. You've got two car manufacturers, they merge. Two travel agents, they merge. They're doing the same thing in the same industry sector. They're merging because they want to become bigger, more dominant, greater market share, more profitable businesses. Horizontal, because it's on the line. They're at the same point. Vertical, obviously, up and down. It's when a firm merges or takes over another firm, but either uh, forwards or backwards in the chain than where they currently are. So. This is the example that I use when, I, when we taught you in class. But if you imagine um, Birdseye, the food manufacturer, might want to merge with and buy um, some fishermen trawlers that would guarantee Birdseye supplies, wouldn't it? And it would make sure that not only did Birdseye get the supplies, they would get them at a reasonable price as well. Um, sometimes, though, it might make sense to merge forwards. So 
it might be sensible for Birdseye to buy a small chain of supermarkets. That way, Birdseye wouldn't be relying on the established supermarkets like Asda to hopefully sell its fish fingers and its fish cakes and the other products it makes because it would be able to sell directly to customers themselves if it owned its own set of shops. So again, good solid reasons, different reasons to horizontal merger. Only the last two, um, lateral integration, very, very rarely asked in the exam, but just in case, is when two firms join together where they make similar products, you know, um, a chocolate manufacturer and a crisp manufacturer, a TV manufacturer, Blu-ray manufacturer. They're kind of similar, cars, motorbikes, not quite the same. So you've got expertise in it, but you're branching out nevertheless. You're diversifying a little bit. And that's what the last one's all about. A conglomerate integration is where you have a large company that buys lots of different companies and different types of businesses. Like you might have a, a theme park and a, a, and a, a shop chain and a, um, a, car money, you know, a, um, a car manufacturer. You might have a bank. You think, well, that, that sounds daft, have a business that owns all of them. But if you've got, if you own five, six, seven very profitable businesses that you've spread the risk out, and if one of those businesses fails or struggles, you're going to be just fine. And that's the idea of a conglomerate. It's a very, very large business that makes many different products and it owns lots of other little businesses within its, its parent company. Okay? Don't overcomplicate it. Just keep it to those definitions there and you'll be just fine. So there are the videos for Unit 1. I hope that's you found that useful. And last but not least, the secret letter for this video is T. So now you have enough to work out what the company is for Unit 1.